Take your CJ7 all the way to 11. Jeepers with Cool Guy. In this episode, we're going to take apart the fresh air unit. It's actually really simple. There's not a whole lot to it. Um, make sure you document everything that you do on this because at least in this area, this main hinge area, uh, there's a lot of different pieces here um, and it might be a little confusing trying to put it back together. One thing I've already gone ahead and done is I've taken out all of the rivets that go all the way around this body. Be careful when you're drilling out the rivets. Uh, there's a bunch of them and the, the plastic here is very brittle. Mine, uh, for the most part, from here all the way to the other side. The top part has already broken through, so I'm going to have to create new holes for the rivets to go into. Not a big deal, but part of the process. This thing doesn't have to be very glamorized. Not all that pretty, because this thing is tucked up behind the heater box and um, up underneath the dashboard. So this is purely functional. Um, so we'll see how much I really want to put into it. Let's start by taking off these tension washers. We're going to go with the spring. Not a whole lot of tension there. Nice and easy. You can see how one's longer than the other. Remember, document. Plastic washer. Let's make our lives a little bit easier. Take off this tension washer on the back side. That way by doing that, we're able to slide that off and this plate will be able to move a lot easier and hopefully we'll be able to get into and take off that washer easier. All right, that was a fail. I had to break it to get it off. Just couldn't get the angle on it and it wasn't coming off easy enough. I know Quadratech carries these. They're like 50 cents a piece. It's a pain in the butt, but oh well. Another, pro another washer. This is connected to the inside flap. Take out this slider piece. Plastic washer there, and there was a plastic washer underneath that connected it there to separate it from this plate. So a whole bunch of plastic washers, looks like five in total. I need to take off the flap control, five sixteenths screw, holding it into the mounting plate. This one seems to be in fairly good shape, not a lot of rust, slides easily enough. Now that we've gotten that taken apart, you can pretty much drop out the whole bottom part of the unit. Not the prettiest thing, but it'll clean up well. Take note that this, these are the rivets that hold in the computer bracket. It's easier to take them out from the inside than it is from the outside. And also here is your defrost heater coil. Um, this is the, uh, the connection piece that hooks up to that. And all these are, are two resistance wires from that. And they come out easily with two sheet metal screws. The connectors here have rusted um, with the actual heating coil, resistor coil wires. So if you can sandblast this or use some vinegar or whatever that is to get that rust off, then you'll get these back in shape. These don't rust out, they're pretty good, but these are steel support posts. Now that we've got all the pieces off of the lower housing piece, sands the computer bracket, which I, I don't know if I'm going to do anything with it. I might take it off later. Put that aside. One thing to take note of, on this end, where your uh, resistor wires are, your defrost, there is a support post 
that goes across that is not mounted to anything. It uses the retention of the, the rivets to hold it into place. I believe this is here just for structure. So let's move on to the actual main flap. You need to take off this tension washer. Hopefully we don't bust this one out. Now let's go with that. Bigger pliers. Bigger always solves the problem. Plastic washer on the inside. Really your biggest concern out of this piece is how well conditioned the rubber still is. This seems, although it's very dirty and rusty on the inside of the plate, this is an easy fix. This is looks like it would do really well uh, if I soaked it in some purple power. By the way, if you're trying to revitalize some rubber um, that's part of a post like this, soak it in some purple power for half hour, 45 minutes, and this stuff becomes very pliable. It cleans off all of the oxidation on the outside of the, the rubber very easily. It doesn't really cause any damage to anything. Let's use some WD-40 and get a little bit of squeaky going on there. And then that should come out nice and easy. And yes, I know petroleum doesn't work very well with rubber. So I've already got my purple power batch right over here. So I'm going to drop this in here, let it soak for a little while. And I'll show you once that comes out what it looks like. Pull out your main post, another plastic washer on there. So this piece will need, I'll need to, you need to drill out two rivets to get this main piece off. These rivets are easily replaceable. Um, and that's just so that I can soak this or uh, sandblast it and get it thoroughly cleaned up. There is a tension washer on the other side of this. Up there. Small spring. Release that from the support bracket. Again we have another tension washer on the back side of this post too. At that point you can take off the main uh, control rod and there's only a couple more pieces left. anywhere until I've removed this tension washer. Now I might need to tap this one through. Have patience with this if yours is really rusted out. It will eventually come out with time. Just keep using lubrication, rockering it back and forth slowly trying to break through that rust, wedging it back and forth and it'll eventually come out. Now at this point, you need to take out the rivets, the two rivets here, and drill out the two rivets on this part. As far as these rivets are concerned, all you need to do is just drill enough to where you take out the outer edge of the rivet and then you can push it through. Tough part is try to keep it from spinning. should be able to take a pull punch and pop it through. Careful not to punch through the plastic. Pieces out. And then seeing how all you need to do is just replace the rivets. And now we can sandblast and get this all nice and powder coated and pretty. One of the things I wanted to show you was I just pulled this out of the purple power um, bath and how nice and flexible and pretty much kind of restored. See that sheen on the rubber? And that cleaned all the oxidation off and it doesn't affect any of the, uh, the rust like it doesn't cause rust or anything. Uh, it just cleaned it all off. It looks, I mean it's this thing feels like it's brand new. Well hopefully you can see that after just a easy wash down with some soap and some water how much better this stuff looks. 
So I have decided that I'm going to go ahead and spray paint all this stuff. I'm going to just do it in the simple Rust-Oleum um, matte black, flat black. Gives it a really cool look. Um, one other thing that I wanted to bring up before I go into restoring this thing truly is that there's a lot of parts on here, or a lot of sections on here where the plastic is brittle. Uh, what you can do is you can use a heat gun and heat it up, not to the point where you're actually melting it, but to the point where it's pretty close to melting that. And what that will do is it kind of revitalizes, re-energizes the, uh, the plastic, brings the oils back to the, the top part, makes it a little bit more pliable. So if you do have some areas where you need to go through and re-drill or some places where it's brittle, try using a heat gun. I think you'll be surprised at how much uh, it will actually help you out.